some brand new faces here on Dialogue Wheel. I'm Andy Burkowski, as always, joined this week by the beautiful, the talented, no, not Matt, Zachary Fanny. How are you doing today, Zach? Good. Oh, he turned on his mic. <laughs> I, I worked. It worked. Good I can job. Do it. I can do two things now. Well, what do people know about you, Zach? <sighs> Very little. Remind uh, them. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Um, I oh, teach, God. I write, I talk about things sometimes, not well. This is, uh, that was really good. Yeah. Matt Thanks. is here as well. How you doing, Matt? I'm doing good. You guys playing any games recently? Yeah, oh, man. that's what I am. Yeah, that's I, a gamer. Like, yeah. I'm a, no, I'm a Medjai. That's my life now. Oh. I'm working in my town, asking people, can I find your book for you? And what they call the police and I have to leave. What are you playing? <laughs> Assassin's Creed Origins. There we go. Yeah. Well done. I'm still on Cuphead. It's I just can't oh, get there. I can't. It's, I can't drop it until you're I finish dumb. it. Why no. do you enjoy that? I can't. I just like it's weird. It's like a masochist. Yeah. It's just, I, yeah. It's Ma- so, so what's yeah. Cuphead? Get the fuck out of here. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> no, hey guys, no, rape. Yeah. No. <laughs> what? Huh? Abortion. Oh no. Here we go. Molestation. No, keep talking about Cuphead. Oh, keep oh, talking yeah. about God. Cuphead. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> please. No, no. no. Female circumcision. I'm, so confused. Oh, so these are, these are some serious topics that shouldn't just be screamed at when people are having a kind of nice conversation about something that's familiar to them. Unfortunately, this week at the uh, Paris Games Week, Sony was hosting it. We got to see the new lineup of uh, games that Sony is going to be bringing out in the next 12 months. A lot of heavy hitters. Got to see some Spider-Man, Last of Us 2, of course, the new God of War, mm-hmm. and Detroit Become Human. Is that correct? Did I say that right? Yep. Could be. Anyone's become, guess. Becoming? Who, becoming no, human? I, no, Detroit, I think it's become. It's Detroit become. is a human. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't have a chance, to, if you just saw the trailers, then you really missed out. Because the live stream, the actual showcase event, had something that was a little bit shocking. I didn't just accost you guys for no reason. There's not, so I do apologize oh, if that was good. upsetting. It did replicate my experience of that entire uh, yeah, then, press a conference. Bit. A little yeah. bit. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. And again, what you're about to see, something that the Sony people decided not to share, is a little bit harrowing and uh, could make you feel uncomfortable. So here's uh, just a little take of, of what happened. Yeah. Whew. Anyone else need a breather? two weeks so the place is a mess you do the housework the washing you cook the meals that's alice you look after her homework bath all that crap got it right away todd aren't you going to school today Maybe we can be friends again. You shouldn't mess around with my stuff. It makes me nervous. I'm sorry. The fun-loving, happy, goofy comic book Peter Parker himself, Mm. and then a very serious take. At domestic violence. Uh, don't for forget about the, uh, the follow-up of God of War, just to sandwich that together. Yeah, and a little bit of Last of Us human mu- uh, female mutilation, yep. which was just fun, fun, fun. Now, we decided that, you know, here at VGS, the thing we really want to talk about this week, the why we are using our dialogue wheel powers is to discuss the idea that violence in video games should not be a marketing tool. So, Zach, we'll, we'll start with you. Uh, you really brought this to us when I was. We were talking about ideas. You're really pushing the fact that you know. I was the idea you, man. You were no. You said this really made you feel uncomfortable. So let's. Uh, yeah. What yeah. What exactly really stuck in your craw uh, this time around? Well, I didn't. Uh, it, it kind of brought an issue to the forefront that I thought ha- ha- has existed for a while, which is that video games have, I think, a violence problem. And I think the problem with what we just saw is not just that you have a thematic whiplash of like Spider-Man and then, you know, grisly uh, torture scenes and whatnot. It's that 
it, the marketing context here for selling the product of, of a game kind of commodifies violence and the experiences that are embedded within them. So mm-hmm. like people experience domestic abuse and you know forms of torture, psychological mm-hmm. torture and whatnot. And then to frame them as kind of game mechanics that you that get you to experience love. and play, yeah. uh, so you should buy this game is just so kind of, it's really sickening because it's crass, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's saying that these things you know aren't more than uh, appealing features for players to, to buy and experience. Mm-hmm. What are you thinking, man? I'm just, it, it's kind of weird to hear it, it said so elo- eloquently because it's uh, it is weird. Fe- it's it's just <laughs> it's a, no, but it's like a, it's a feeling you get. And uh, when I saw it, I, it was jarring, and I couldn't put my finger on to why. So hearing it come out like that, I think it is because it is a selling point. If they took it, if I had just seen that on its own and uh, it not be you know part of this big showcase uh, where you know people paid lots of money to see and whatnot, I just. I I probably would have taken it in differently. Mm -hmm. I probably would have appreciated it more and not just, you know, stepped away from it. Well, it's interesting because it's, yeah, maybe if we saw it on its own, uh, it it would be okay, right? Mm -hmm. Um, But I think even that, if you just took The Last of Us trailer and just watched that or just watched the Detroit uh, excerpt that they had, I think the problem is that those things are atomized into their own separate little scenes. Because they're scenes. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. 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 And I think it would still be weird. I think the marketing um, uh, you know, whiplash and contrast between the different products they're selling Mm -hmm. just shows a problem that's deeply embedded within there. It's Mm -hmm. odd because in other mediums, this doesn't really happen. Like you think about the Game of Thrones season that was replete with (laughs) some very inappropriate and poorly executed violence against women yeah, yeah. we were unfortunately surprised by that when we got to see right, it it right. wasn't as if they're like oh this new trailer's coming out the biggest show ever here you get a little uh, scene of Sansa rape which we yeah, all wanted yeah. to see no yeah, yeah. it was they would never take it out of the context nope. because even when it was done poorly they understood they, that this yeah. would be negative and I think what you were touching on there Zach is what really upset most people the, the thing that they couldn't describe yeah. was the fact that we got to see something that was impactful and we weren't able to have the kind of resonating catharsis with it because it was sold as a gameplay, yeah. something you'd and enjoy. It, it's almost like yeah. trying to say, well, you felt a little manipulated yeah. a bit. I think well, because that's the best it's, way it's to impact, it. but literally the, the the bluntest type of impact, which is, oh, you're going to see a child get abused. Oh, yeah. And it's just like, an, like, and it's so crass that they would just use that as a way to show players, oh, this is something you would like to experience. Like, imagining, you mentioned the Sansa, like yeah. Game of Thrones. So imagine them showing a clip of that scene as a, an enticement for you to watch. Yeah, that's Game what I'm saying. Thrones. It would be yeah. like a Facebook ad. Like that, and then right that, after it's Astonishing. Done saying, yeah. You know, get get the next Bex, yeah. uh get the DVDs coming out. And later. we don't even like we don't even like the Game of Thrones. The Game of Thrones violence and, and uh, sexuality scenes are problematic, even when they're within their context, yeah. right? So to, to take them out of context and yeah, use them but there's in always the reward of going through that and getting to the end point. And and, and with this, there's no in storytelling. Yeah, I mean, that's what yeah, I mean. Yeah. And with this, using it as a selling point, like we don't get to see the outcome. We don't get to see the the moment where we prevail in that situation. I think maybe if they had marketed maybe the positive side in the sense of you doing something about it and right. it could be different I, I still think it's it's, it's crass just that you're marketing no exactly serious moments but we did I, we mentioned before that violence should not be a marketing tool a lot of video games use violence as a marketing tool one of the biggest games coming out next week the new call of duty world war ii is about killing not nazis so to speak but mm. killing other people <laughs> in a video game it's something that's <laughs> it's one of the main things that we all will do when we play a game oh. is kill someone else Assassin's Creed. The word assassin is in the title. You know, it's a function that's used to sell games. Why is that sometimes okay? And you get excited about exploring the world of the Magi and, and ancient Egypt. But in this case, it made you feel so revolting that you revolted that you almost wanted to uh, turn it off and kind of put you off the game a bit. Well, I think it's because in when you play a game, you're playing to escape reality and this was so embedded in what we do like assassin's creed like yeah i'm gonna kill you know you don't assassinate people i mean no, not on the down the reg not on the reg, not on the reg. <laughs> you know how people find the book of the dead <laughs> <laughs> but it just i said i think um you know there's two different types of violence when you're talking video game wise and you know the assassin's creed and the uh, like anything uh, f- fantastical like mm-hmm. is so far removed from our reality and our um, frame of experience that it, it doesn't hit home it doesn't feel the same it's not violence and this is 
and mm-hmm. you know using that as a marketing tool is because throwing you know Mario throwing his hat at someone and making oh, him fall down is still violence. Mm-hmm. Like that dude's dead. Yep. <laughs> that goomba's gone. I've killed Toad <laughs> four million <laughs> times. Yeah. Well, just to touch on that quickly before you get started there, Fanny, because I saw your eyes getting ready, getting mm-hmm. revved up. Here we go. The same week that this is happening, Nintendo is proving yet again that they can still provide incredible gameplay experiences and not make you feel uncomfortable. Everyone is swooning over Super Mario Odyssey. They're going crazy for it. How do you guys feel? Because we're adult gamers that want to play these serious things, but I feel more attracted to the Super Mario route than more than I have in years because of the current I know, climate. I got, adulthood is a bleak, bleak world. <laughs> I just need that, some color in my life. Yeah, that, that I, I just can't need some navigate joy. successfully, and I do not want to see a woman's arm get blown apart by a hammer. Yeah. I just, I just want to, you know, be Bowser in a, you know, in a, in a boat with wheels that I can shoot magic rainbows at other people. It's a little bit of like um, stress fatigue, right? We're getting yeah, a little okay. fatigued yeah. with the reality. But of I, it. I do disagree with the idea that like games are escapist like i don't think any art should be escapist oh really yeah like just i want i want to uh you know have like like the idea of movies of you know turn off your brain movies you just escape it's like no i think games are so fascinating because they're medium that like you mentioned before have player agency where you're involved in that narrative and so i think games have a higher responsibility to do justice to the scenes and themes and truths that they Mm -hmm. depict more than any other medium so how do we in this case kind of get over this hump that we we first introduced yeah. of this game really making a mistake. How do we how does Detroit become human advertise? Because it's still that that's their right, you know, even if it yeah. is a very artistic game that deals mm-hmm. with some heady stuff, how does it advertise and what's the right way to do it? Sh- that's really what I, the I, answer I, we're trying to say. Yeah, we, yeah. we agree here that that should not have been an advertisement. I don't, that it didn't I, work. I don't think you can advertise it. I think it's well, some, you got to no, learn no, about it. But there are it. other parts to this game. There are other like unless your game is completely surrounded by this one storyline, yeah. and, and even then there are trailers that come out that like like Uncharted Two have nothing to do with the main story, mm-hmm. and you can still advertise your game and still yeah. get it out there. Um, I just don't. I just think you stay away from it and you let the player experience it for the first time in that setting, and it's going to yeah. be way more impactful at the end of the day. Even maybe so to the point where that's how it works. That's mm. how you yeah. know if you're going through this for the Invited, first time and you yeah. don't see it coming. There's been no trailer about it, yeah. and you're experiencing it. And then you, as the player, when you were talking about player agency, yeah, yeah. you get to do that. You get yeah. to make those choices. Maybe that becomes more, mm-hmm. you know. Um, uh, realistic or more, I don't know, uh, evocative. Yeah, at least you get your catharsis from it. Well, that's it. Well, so. What do you th- What do you think, Fanny? How do well, you I think I think this? the article made an in- interesting point in that we shouldn't just be advertising things based on the machine you're playing them on. It's kind mm-hmm. of very weird, especially because games are becoming more narratively complex and uh, distinct, which is what's kind of so funny and disturbing about this mishmash of games that they're showing in sequence together. Um, but I think it's a bigger problem that like. Games are just kind of using violence very reductively to signify very blatant things about their art. So the Last of Us trailer bugged me a lot too because it's just, oh, here's people you don't know or don't have a connection to, don't have context for, you're not embedded in narratively, and you're seeing their arm get you know hit apart by a hammer, mm-hmm. you're seeing their womb get cut open or threatened to cut what, open. What it should have what should um, it have been the Last of Us two trailer then? What's a better way? Maybe like a complete coherent scene and moment that we can understand between maybe the characters. ending right before that. Maybe yeah. the scene that led up to that one moment. That, so it's the that, threat that, of violence. That last, of us, that last of Us scene is a scene all about gratuitous violence so that they can signify that we're serious, we're a piece of art, we're yeah. like, you know, we're about all, hate, like that's, yeah, you we're know. gritty, we, yeah, we have a hate as a central theme, uh, as opposed to just showing us maybe a beautiful moment between two characters we don't know, but by the end of that little scene, we understand a little bit better and are enticed by, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Because that's, it's so crass because it's enticing you by violence as opposed to character connection or okay. thematic connection. So I think we're in agreement here that we shouldn't entice the game development community and how people publish games shouldn't try to sell the real violence like they do the fake violence or the things that the violence with a little v that we see yeah. in the video game community yeah. you know like assassin's creed it's okay if you see him jumping off with two crossbows and killing three people that way because we understand okay. the references that it's in and it, it indicates another place in our brain and that's an okay marketing tool i think we we agree here that trying to show realistic violence which is such a horrible thing 
Yeah, what like, do you think about it? it? it really like, we have means no like, violence yeah, in our yeah, life yeah. at all. Realistic really. Really. means that like other people watching have experienced yeah, this. Yeah, there's well. probably I mean yeah, there's yeah. a very good chance that people sitting in that room and I mean yeah. people, not person, yeah. people yeah, yeah. in that room had gone through those moments. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And that I I mean triggering is one word, but like I I can only imagine sitting there and you know people are clapping that's for a this very game. good point. That yeah, right yeah, after yeah. that like, scene yeah. where you saw this herring moment, people were clapping. Yeah. And it's that, I, I, cannot, I cannot put myself you know in that person's shoes. Take it away. It's, it's done. Gross. Let's it's just gross. let's don't. Yeah, like, we all agree. <laughs> big big mistake. David Cage. What are you thinking? I was on your team, man. All right. But I think the more interesting thing that really opens up here, if you, you'll bear with us, folks, game design should support the narrative. Narrative should not be the thing that supports game design and i think that's kind of our core issue here and we'll use the detroit becoming human scene as an example uh zach you were mentioning before we began that the moment when you made a choice through a simple yeah. button press yeah kind of undermined and really hurt the story they were trying to tell and i mentioned like before that games have a high responsibility to these moments and the, these um kind of terrible scenes and, and themes and, and stuff uh, because they involve the player more than any other medium. But I think as a medium, they tend more to uh, a kind of reductionism with violence in that because you have to literally map a scene or a moment to a set number of buttons mm -hmm. that you're, like you said, it's like press, you know, a square to mourn. Yeah. You know, and, and like game, this, 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 this <laughs> child is being abused and it's like, it free, you know, time freezes and says, oh, press triangle to react this, yeah. press square to react this way. And by having that game mechanic so much at the forefront, it kind of reduces and subsumes that experience and that violence, that true, very truthful, real violence into that mechanic. And so it's really just kind of cheapening the truth that you're trying to, you know, make and the player experience. Do you think it's cheapening the truth just because you realize you're in a game? Or yeah, be, it, it's, uh, yeah. because the gameplay you're, you're doesn't seem, and I mean, again, that scene in the context of the game might yeah. work, but, you know, game mechanics, games, because they're mechanized, run the risk of mechanizing the stories they're telling, game which design, means it cheapens yeah. them. Game yeah. design functions shouldn't yeah. remind you you're in a game. No, absolutely. Yeah, no, right. Exactly. Great mechanics. Exactly. It should immerse you more. Immerse, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Matt, our whole issue here now, because mm -hmm. we've, we've solved the problem with video game marketing, yeah. we'll get our you know, <laughs> checks in the mail. Now it's about how violence and these greater themes are shown to us within a video game. Yeah. The mechanics, Fanny had a problem with how the mechanics kind of undermine the story. Mm -hmm. Do you find yourself in the same position? Uh, I mean, or like a little. It, it goes it, both ways, but really, if I can forget that I'm in a game, I can almost accept anything in the sense of like if I'm immersed and I don't feel like it's been trivialized or or simplified and it is a hard choice to make and the mechanics have pushed me to that point then I think you know you can pretty much do anything mm -hmm. but I think that line is so hard to get to uh, there's a lot of games that you know have messed it up over the years and it's always been an issue in the industry I mean there are some games that do it well mm -hmm. um, I really enjoyed Life is Strange Yes. Um, okay. So we were talking about that again. What What's the moment in Life is Strange? So in Life that, is Strange, you that was not advertised. That no one like no, knew about. It was. It, it's still a Sony game. It wasn't put into their Sony reel, of being like, "Get ready for this." No, exactly. <laughs> There's a moment where you're on. Uh, you as the character have made choices throughout spoiler, the game. Spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Yeah, spoiler, spoiler, spoiler. Here it comes. Uh, like eight years old now. No, there's a moment where uh, you've progressed through the game as a high schooler and you're making the, the, the simplest choices like watering a plant and that will have effects later in the game. Um, things like World's that. World's over. Oh, right? Great Paris conference. <laughs> I'm not, like, I'm not, it's so weird. Um, and one of the moments is at the uh, kind of, how would we say, halfway through the game, you're on this rooftop with a girl who's going to commit suicide and everything from you saying hi to her in the classroom on the first day will mm. affect the outcome. And it becomes a dialogue wheel thing, yeah. But it's in that moment that would make sense. That's yeah, you yeah, would exactly. you, you would you scrambling trying to think yeah, of something yeah, to say. So you the game in that moment the mm -hmm. gameplay mechanics didn't for you mm -hmm. the fact that you were making choices with buttons yeah. didn't undermine not at the, all because the experience the choices and that mechanic was used to build towards this narrative moment oh, exactly. because because yeah, yeah. you've already made so many choices yeah, yeah. previously yeah. exactly yeah. and then in that moment there's also the whole time issue because if you in a lot of dialogue dialogue wheels you have you know a, a frame yeah, of time yeah, yeah. and that was also a yeah. Thing, and it's like, oh, what do I do in this moment? Yeah. Because I legitimately, I actually thought there was no way that she would jump because the selection of things were so yeah. Was well, so yeah. that one yeah. of the options? Like do a flip? No, <laughs> <laughs> but like I was just like, oh, I've got this. Like I can I can talk this person. And yeah. the moment that, you know, there are two outcomes obviously to yeah. that scenario. But when I failed, it was 
it hurt. Did you I, reload? Uh, I didn't. I chose it. When, oh, I, when I play those kind of games, that's insane. I do, when I play those games, oh, I new. play them through God. once with whatever choices I make unknowingly. Oh, I respect I, that. I, I got my go. life. I've already made enough wrong choices. I don't need my <laughs> games no, to do I, that. I, I, strange enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I, I, no, no, I, I don't go back on my choices. I, oh, I make them Matt. and then, you know, oh, hard work. You, you know what? I might do that. Now. Yeah, but and then there's also that. the replay That's value. Terrible. Then I get I to go, like and then I get to go back and, and right, right. make well, a whole bunch on. of different choices. Like this in, is kind of a good example, though, yeah. because by your own omission, you've been able to undercut a tool that Zach and I use to kind of make the impact of games not as strong. So if yeah, we make a wrong the choice, good, yeah, 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 yeah. So if we no. make a wrong choice, yeah. you get simple you get a reload, yeah, and yeah. we can make the right choice after that. So that's an example of how the gamification of narrative hurt. Mm-hmm. There are it, some ways that you sorry one second. There, yeah. there are some ways that the gamification of the narrative does help, and of course mm-hmm. we talk about a lot. But Spec Ops: The Line is another example of where you pressing a button and the banality of that evil and the responsibility as a soldier in that soldier story, how simple it was, led to a feeling of horror that I think you wouldn't get if this was just an interactive cutscene because it was so simple and, and easy. Yeah. I know, Zach, you've recently played, um, what's the title? That Hellblade? Was, yes, that yeah, did yeah, this yeah. very, very well, right? Yeah, and I think that's another thing we should touch on is that Hellblade, I thought, worked really well. And if that's not universal. People who have some of the mental health issues that um, the main character suffers from took issue with the game, and that's a really interesting discussion to have. But I thought it, I thought it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought it, it did really work because it wasn't afraid to make the player uncomfortable through the mechanics. And mm-hmm. I think with uh, you know with violence, there's a tendency that violence has to be fun and engaging. Okay, and so if you're yeah. dealing with like real tangible violence that people experience in you know their daily lives, yeah. um, it's kind of you know a, a dissonance with like the fact that we have to make the game fun and palatable. Mm-hmm. And I thought Hellblade was really revelatory because when I put on the headphones, I was uncomfortable at a lot of points, mm-hmm. and like even mechanically, it was like hard and yeah. like I don't want to spoil. It, but at the end of the game, there is like. An issue with the mechanics that you cannot overcome, mm-hmm. oh. and I thought that that was a fascinating way to have the gameplay actually service your experience of this character's personal mm-hmm. uh, life. Is like game mechanics were used to develop yeah. empathy. So there yeah. we, I think that I think you really That's hit the huge. nail on the head there. Yeah. Is that gameplay mechanics were used to develop empathy? Gameplay mechanics, these words that we say, it's how we really interpret and get to experience. Hit the mic away. Uh, this story, violence. I think real violence with that capital V shouldn't be fun and should be even not fun uncomfortable to play yeah. so i think this is this is at least where i'm taking my uh sticking the ground on this one that game development studios that want to deal with these heady issues have a responsibility to make the hard choices and go to their production team and say listen when i have this scene in last of us where this woman is getting beaten I want you to make it very, very difficult to play afterwards. I want there to be a feeling that this wasn't just a horror porn moment, Mm -hmm. but that gameplay is is changing and that it's harder and there's something that's been affected that changes the story. So that's kind of where I'm finishing this off here what about you guys well, no, give you guys a final word i'm here. just saying that if you can if you can push your narrative and use game mechanics and make the player uh feel something and make it feel uncomfortable and make it hard to go on or uh, f- for like uh, the most dramatic like hard to live with yourself or like mm. whatever it is because you had to do that um i think that's that's the way you need to do make about a it. button not work make right? like a like, jump gone like really like do something like that so yeah. you be like why can't i do that oh yeah because I that person died. Like yeah. this this was mm. an impact. We kill millions of people in video games. Yeah. Let's make one death actually mean something yep. a little yeah. bit. Fanny, I'll I'll give you the last word since I had the first. Well, I want to save this moment. Oh, let's turn up the volume. <laughs> turn up the music. <laughs> no, go ahead. Um, well, I would just say, like you know, uh, I think games, like I said, have the potential to uh, present with us narratives in, in in a way that we have not experienced before in human history. If you're going to do that, I think you have to accept the responsibility that comes with dealing with topics that speak to people's true uh, lived experiences. And I think in order to do that, you're going to have to break and push the boundaries of the traditional mechanics and marketing strategies that you use to sell. You you know Sonic and you know Mario Kart and the traditional video games that came out when our first systems emerged on the scene. I just want games to rise to that occasion and not fall by the wayside and cheapen our lives in the process. And they're gonna cheapen Zach's life. <laughs> <laughs> A huge thank you to Zach Fanny, Matt Lakai. We'll have you guys next week, ideally. And uh, yeah, some more stuff coming on the channel. We talked about Cuphead, it's coming up. Uh, Matt had a big talk about Cuphead. I reviewed the Xbox One X. It's right here. It's in the corner. 
Got some interesting things uh, to say about that. And yeah, Fanny's going to be talking about Wolfenstein. Oh, it, we just we got we got a lot coming out. Uh, thank you guys. And again, very serious topic. But I I'm, I think you know we we were able to find something that is close to truth. What do you guys <laughs> think? If you're listening right now, do you think that violence with that capital V needs to be dealt with more seriously? Or are games kind of immune to this and it hurts the process? Uh, leave a comment below. I'll probably delete it. <laughs> Andy Burkowski, Dialogue Wheel. <laughs> Without a doubt, the worst episode ever. Rest assured that I was on the internet within minutes registering my disgust throughout the world.